Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Champagne Wives podcast. I'm your host, Kelly. And I'm your co-host, Nicole. Hey, Kels. Hi. How are we? We are. Look. <laughs> okay, so let me start here. Today was busy. Yeah. It was a busy day today. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a lot going on. The kids, I had meetings late in the afternoon, which I usually don't have. <laughs> um, so the kids are going back to school. So we had to get some stuff done with the kids yeah. today. All this is happening before we were supposed to come here to record. So mm-hmm. I know we say it all the time, but definitely today is we're, we've come in on, well, I've come in on two wheels. Two wheels. But <laughs> I will say today has had me, ch- I've been chuckling really from last night to today. Why? <laughs> from the socials. Okay. <laughs> from the Montgomery ball brawl. <laughs> and I know. You, the Montgomery know. motorboat massacre. Girl. Massacre. <laughs> I I cannot like I have been dying all day that has like literally calmed my nerves because of the way that I have been laughing my ass off at the memes Mm -hmm. in like the videos Mm -hmm. on TikToks just last I saw somebody recreated the black national anthem (laughs) with that footage in the background lift every chair and swing oh my god Y'all are hilarious. So, hilarious. So that has been keeping me afloat mm-hmm. on this like super busy day. No pun intended. No pun intended. Like, no pun intended <laughs> at all. And I hate to steal the theme from what's popping because okay. I'm sure that was probably something that we were going to talk yes. about. What's popping. But I think this particular incident just deserved its own like spotlight at the beginning yeah. because it's just it's been, there's so many things wrapped there's, up into this one incident. It, this, <laughs> Like just a level of it, like it's pride, such a, such a, a retribution. Moment. It is. It is. They carried the the weight of c- almost centuries on their back yes. with these swims and these chair swings. The okay. chair swings, girl. Yes. It's just been so. Yeah, that has been yes. keeping me like spirits lifted. <laughs> yes, given the stress that yeah. I've been under with everything that I've had to get done. Yeah. Through. So, how about you? Um. Yeah, we just coined a phrase. Because you asked, how are we going to get through this? And I said, G-O-G, by the grace of God. Grace of God. So we're going to do it. Won't he um, do it? Yeah, won't he do it? Uh, weekend was uh, was good. Uh, hung out with my kids. Got ready for back to school, like you said. Um, and today was just, I don't know. I'm, I just I'm, just felt heavy. I was I had my moments of levity, yes, with the socials, but just felt heavy. Um, so we got to process that and figure out what the hell's going on. But yeah, it happens. Yeah, it does. It happens to the best of us. We all have our days. Um, so no real segue. Um, do want to note though that we have gone down on the bottle sizes because last week we did a whole bottle. I know, and it was just too much. We were, we were all over the place. We were keeping. <laughs> hard towards the end. That, that's what usually happens when yeah. we have a whole bottle yeah. of champagne. That was like season three, season that was two, like two energy. Two and one. one. Yeah, yeah, we were cutting up mm-hmm. for the yeah. beginning season. So we are back so. to our um, our regularly scheduled sizing. Yeah. Uh, I even asked you, I was like, do you want to go today with, with no champagne? And she was just like, no. 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 Can't it's been it. one of those days where actually I like, like, could put something this. in the, something else in these glasses. We but. could. But why? Okay. But we're here. So we're going to sip slow. We've we've monitored ourselves. So um, don't have an awesome segue for uh, today's topic, but uh, we had agreed that we would talk about things that we're just too grown for at this yeah. point in the stage in life. Well, last week we talked about like Suki, Sukiyana and mm-hmm. the responsibility that yeah. African-Americans in general, mm-hmm. have, well, or is there a responsibility that African-Americans right. have like as mm-hmm. they're kind of on the incline to uplift the race? Yep. Um, so I think it's a perfect time to talk about this week things that like we're too grown for in mm-hmm. particular. And this is mm-hmm. in no order. In and no order. I don't even have a list, child. I'm just actually freestyling this okay. because I had no time to Come prepare. On, DJ Kill. And you have notes though. You I feel free to go first. I, I have I have a I have a couple of things that I did okay. jot down. Okay. Um and I'm sure there's there's How many parallel. did you jot down, child? Well, you know, um, one, two, three, about four. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's, there's probably a fifth in the arsenal, but, okay. um, but I did jot down four. Okay. Um, so one thing that I'm just done with, um, or too old to do, I wouldn't even say done with, cause I don't think I've really ever done it, but, mm-hmm. um, competing with other women, hmm. like, what are we doing? Yeah. At the end of the day, 
How do you even compete? I don't even know what that means. So you're not one who does that. So I'm oh. not surprised that like you're asking that question. I'm like, what you, does that, that, that even is not, mean? I don't even know. There are women okay. who do compete with really with other so people. So what does that look like? Oh gosh, what does that look like? That looks like, um, you know, Mrs. Me Too or Miss Me Too. Mm. Um, somebody who feels like they need to outdo a friend when they have success, mm. right? Like, oh, I'm happy for you, but like they have to, they're motivated to do more um, because they want to make sure that their friend can't is be the outdone. Star of the show, the mm. show exactly can't be outdone. Um, so it's that competitive nature at times that I think can mm. exist between women. Um, and hey, Iron sharpens iron. I always say this mm -hmm. and healthy competition, if you will. Um, and let's use the phrase competition lightly, but I like iron sharpens iron a lot better because you want people in your circle that are going to help elevate you yeah. and that you will um, you will elevate. It should be a reciprocal relationship yeah. there. But when it looks like competition and you have people who just aren't who just aren't happy for you. And there are people there are friend groups in this world where that's actually the case. You have girls who just do not like each other, but they hang out every well, single week. They want to hang out. Yeah. You know, and they do things together. They travel together. Look at our girl who went to Mexico. Oh, yeah, who got beat by her yeah, so-called friends. friends beat yeah. And, you know, came back in a casket. You yeah. Know, God bless her soul. Oh, it's like that little 15-year-old boy that, ha that happened like a couple of weeks ago where mm. he was in a car, I guess, with his friends and he got shot. Mm. And they threw him out of the car in the neighborhood and you could see him on like these people's ring camera oh running gosh. and screaming. Jesus. It's crazy. Yeah. So done with that. Okay. Done with that. Not not on my list of things to to do. And like, I, it's never really been me, um, yeah. but it's just, I'm too old for it. And if there are people who want to make their way into my life that bring that energy, sorry, yeah. no room in the end. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I don't know. Again, I had to ask you like what exactly that was, because <laughs> right. I would say it's just like fake, like fake friendships, like mm -hmm. people who, are around you who either bring no value or who, you know, just don't promote you being your best self and mm -hmm. showing, showing up as your best self. Yeah. Or people who yep. are considered your friends, but they make like little jokes, but not mm -hmm. jokes about yep. you, mm -hmm. um, you know, to try to bring you down and things of that nature. And so... I am too grown for that. Like, you know, we always we always say this, like I keep my circle very small. I don't have a problem with like meeting new people and letting, mm -hmm. letting people in. But I am like really big on energies and just like how a person moves. Like I'm because because I move in such a I don't know, like intentional way. In, in, that's a good word. Intentional, mm -hmm. intentional way. I don't like people who are frivolous. <laughs> And I don't. I mean, I could take a certain level of frivolosity. Frivolosity. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you're not about to play with me. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're not, you're not going to be in my group or around me. And again, provide no value mm -hmm. to my life or, you know, bring down what it is that I'm trying to do or to, to your point, secretly be trying to compete with me mm -hmm. um, or bring me down. And under the guise of like joking or, you know, being playful, like I don't have time for that. Yeah. I feel like my, um, you know, my time is just is, is limited. I have so much stuff that's going on. And we always talk about this. And, you know, Nicole calls me Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> and when I feel like, you know, my friends are doing something that I just don't agree with or that doesn't align with like maybe what they want or how they want to be, then I have a tendency to sometimes -ta -ta. express myself <laughs> in a very colorful way. Direct. <laughs> very direct. Colorful way. Very colorful. And, you know, sometimes it's warranted and a lot of times it's not, but there is just no, like, to, like just no meaning. When I see somebody... I'm either making a mistake or just being, you know, contradictory or doing some shit that I just really don't vibe with. It's just like sometimes for me, it's hard to, to get to the 50. It's either zero to 100. I'm working on that. I am working on that. But I say it all that to say, like, I 
emote and I feel deeply. And so, you know, if I am taking on, I feel like other people's burdens, they have to be people that I care about because I ha- I feel so deeply and I'm so emotional mm-hmm. in my own personal life right. that to take on other people's problems or whatever the case may be, like it, it takes a lot out of me. Um, I'm also very intuitive mm-hmm. as well. And so something could be happening. I reach out to my friend and be like, are you okay? What's going on? I know something's not right. So if I show up and I am voicing my opinions or expressing myself about something that, you know, is happening, then that means I truly do care for you. Otherwise, I'm just like, mm. mm-hmm. I could be seeing you walk off a cliff child and just be like, <laughs> sorry to that man. <laughs> Girl, oops, sorry. Be careful. <laughs> like, and you know, that's just me. That right, and and a lot of what you have described, a thousand percent uh, agree, and you, and you're completely accurate. And I would say the one thing that we. You have to just, and I say we, but really you, I will always make sure with you that like it's reciprocated, right? So um, when people feel as deeply as you do or um, or shoulder the burdens to the extent that you do, a lot of times that can be draining and it's always about making sure that you recharge and that you replenish because as we yeah. always say here, pouring from an empty cup is useless. And yeah. I know I've emptied that cup a time or two. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> child, it was almost no CW page. No, I'm just joking. Anything in here? But just yeah, joking. no, but for, for real, it's but important seriously. just to like to make sure that it's replenished and that you have people because, yeah, they're going to be seasons, right? right? Um, where you're going to lean on a friend a little bit more than they lean on you and vice versa. Right. Um, but it has to be reciprocal. Yeah, it has. And, and again, I'm the type of person as well. Like I give feedback, but I also receive it. Like mm-hmm. I, I, you know, people can tell me anything and I'll take it you know I'll listen I won't act on it but I'll receive it process it and then move forward I ask all the time for feedback or thoughts on like something that I'm thinking or something that I'm doing so I don't mind receiving the same level of feedback that I you know give to others I'm not that person who can like dish it but can't take it because that's that's just not me um so and I also again have tried to in my approach to certain relationships um express myself in a in a more how what, what word would I use in a more like diplomatic and diplomat- softer yes, way. Yes. Mm-hmm. Diplomatic and softer mm-hmm. way. Yeah. I have. Like I that's I've noticed that. Yeah. That is there's, what there's been marked improvement yeah, there. I've been trying to do because again, I don't want to be mm-hmm. you know, I don't want to run my friends off either. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it goes both ways. Oh. But yeah. Of course. That's it for okay. that one. The friends. No fake friends. No fake friends. Mm-hmm. Um Another one that Mm -hmm. I put on the list, people pleasing. Mm. Um, I think the older you get, the less fucks you give. Um, And people pleasing at times comes with, and I had this as one as well, but I think the two are connected, but you, you... you have a tendency to over-index on people pleasing when there's a little bit of self-doubt that exists. Yes. Um, and so if you can nip that self-doubt in the butt, then you have less of a tendency to want to do things just to please people. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's a fine line of not um, trying to just move in like selfish ways, but everything that you do, when everything that you do or every step that you take is in attempts to try and seek validation or the blessing of somebody, that to me is a little problematic. Mm-hmm. Um, so people pleasing is just something that I am I'm done with. I am at a place in life where um, it's I, I am still growing, I'm still learning, I'm still maturing in a lot of ways and I have never sat in this chair and suggested the opposite of that. But yeah. I'm also not in a place where I feel the need to um, seek validation from people because at the end of the day I know I'm a rock star yeah and you can't change people's you, opinions yeah, of you yeah people pe- like assholes everybody yeah, got one right exactly. and so if if I'm not for you I'm not for you and yeah. that's okay um and if you're not for me you're not for me and right. that's okay let's you know let's amicably part ways and move on right, right? whether it's friendship relationship business partnership whatever the case may be but yeah people pleasing and Assuming that someone's problem with me is my problem. Yeah. Just yeah. not doing it anymore. Yeah. And I think that for people like you, 
like that could be a slippery slope because you are such a giver. I, I mm. will say that's the one thing that like you have mm. more than like me. Like you will give until like physically, mm. like yeah. give until I mean, yeah. you're exhausted. Mm. Like yeah, I've got to go here. I got to go here. I got to do this for this person. I got to do that for that person. I got to, you know, you will do that. Oh, you, I'm, I do you need this? Or oh, I'm feeling sick. Oh, I have this. You're mm. always offering yourself yeah. up um, to people. So I can see how that would be a slippery slope for yeah. you to, to kind of slide into the people pleasing because you yeah. are such a giver yes. and caretaker. Yes. And so, yes. Thank you. That's very an astute observation. Oh, you um, me. I never thought about it like that. Yes. Don't disagree with that. But I, I don't go that extra mile for people who are not in the nucleus. Mm -hmm. So if you're not in the nucleus or it's not going to pay me. <laughs> um, I'm probably not going to give that extra effort. But if you had caught me about three, four or five years ago, different story. Yeah. Right. So that's that's it's very true. Yeah. Very true. For me, I'll say what I am too grown for is not having standards, child. Mm. Like, have your standards. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, I am not dating because I'm married, but you know, for me, maybe look like setting boundaries, like yeah. with my my husband, my children, the people that are closest to me. Yeah, for someone who's dating in their 40s or later in life, it would be define like how you want a man to show up for you in your life mm -hmm. and only accept that. Yeah. I think a lot of the times women are so fearful of being alone that they lower their standards mm -hmm. to try to please keep or attract a man. man. And I think that that is a mistake. Yeah. I think that the women who have and maintain their standards are the ones who are getting in those, um, you know, fulfilling relationships that mm -hmm. these women desire. And I was looking at a video online one day and it was from a dating coach. And it was one girl who was on there who was just, you know, texting with a guy, just going on multiple dates with like the same guy and never kind of set expectations or about her. And it was another girl who said, OK, on the third date, like, I just want to let you know I'm having a good time with you. We're dating, but I am continuing to see other people right. until we have a commitment. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she set that standard. He was just like, oh, well, I guess I got to make my move then. And so, again, a man species is going to do what he wants to do. If He's he likes better. you, you're going to know it. If he doesn't like you, mm -hmm. you're going to know it. You jumping through hoops, lowering your standards, doing whatever the case may be, is not going to keep mm -hmm. a person in your life. That person has to desire to do that on their own. Mm -hmm. and I think a lot of women make that mistake um, on not, you know, having or maintaining their standards. And I think and once you get older, because mm -hmm. we're talking about what I'm too grown for now, um, it's even more important to have standards because you lived your whole life. You at this big grown age, mm -hmm. child, and you don't even know like what you like, what you don't like. You don't know how to stand up for yourself, set boundaries, have standards, you know. Um, so I don't know. I just I want women to step into that power. And again, for me, again, setting boundaries, like even with my little kitties, like, yeah. you know, I have to sometimes like, for example, my son, if I'm eating, he has a tendency all the time to come up to me and say, mm -hmm. mommy, can you do this? Can you do that? And what I would do normally do it. Do it. Mm -hmm. Stop what I'm doing. <laughs> get my ass up. Yep. Go do what he was asking because I love him so much. and He's so cute. <laughs> but get my yeah. ass up. Go do what he wants to do. With him. But then by the time I sit back down to my food, what? Cold. It's cold as fuck. <laughs> and you don't want to think about me. You love some hot food. Burn your taste buds. Hot food. I don't what? get it. In the microwave, three minutes what? on a reheat. Five, child. Like, I'll be like. Do, do, do. I cannot stand cold food. <laughs> I cannot. I like taste so, buds. So, girl, tongue be burning. Like the whole <laughs> through mouth be up, but, uh, but I cannot stand cold food. Right. So now, even with my precious little baby, you know, I've had to say if he comes to me and he asks me to do something while I'm eating, okay, I'll do it after mommy's finished eating. And he's fine, yeah. girl. He is fine. He's good. He moves on. And when I'm done eating. I go in and take care of my baby and I may eat a little bit faster yeah. to try to get to him. But, you know, that's just a boundary that I've had to set, mm -hmm. you know, for myself, for self-maintenance. And so, again, just having those standards, setting boundaries, 
know it what it is that you want and and don't settle for for anything less yeah that's a powerful one um especially when you think about women who are that big age or are of a certain age and yeah they're they're re-entering the dating space or still in the dating space and depending on what they have going on in life whether it's children whether it's co-parenting, whether it's um, having to shoulder uh, the burden of parenting on your own, single, sing, being a single mom and single parent, um, you might at times feel like you need to make some concessions because you have so many things maybe working against you mm-hmm. um, and you have to maybe lower your standards on account of that. But I think what you're saying is is completely true because the moment that you do which you allow people to do once they'll do to you all the time yep right yep um and so uh you can't you can't you can't keep your standards as high as your heels child <laughs> yep. and the right person will rise to meet those standards absolutely and i think that's what people need to understand yeah the right person will rise to meet those standards yeah if you have to do all that shit sis that ain't for you. It ain't for you. It's not for you. No, it's not. It's not. And we as s- bad as this, you want it. The, <laughs> the, as bad as you want it. As bad as you want it. I know. But I get it. there's a blessing in the redirection. Yeah. Right. Um, and I feel like we've talked about that maybe in the reinvention um episode that we had. But if if it's not if they're not showing up for you in the way that you need them to show up, and you know what? This is not a relationship conversation Mm because we're going to move to the next one. But when we had the reel that we posted about a man doesn't do what a man doesn't want to do and y'all are active in the comment section, we see, right? But a lot of men were like, well, if that, that just means that he's not into you. Da, 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 da. Exactly. Or when we said on to the next one, oh, you're not being gracious enough. What is just what if the timing just isn't right? A women were saying that a woman said that women and men. But when women mm-hmm. said it, I was like, pick me. Dustinas. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Shara, sprinkle, sprinkle. But like, what are we talking about? Yeah. If he doesn't, if he doesn't want, if he wanted to do it, he would have the conversation and say, hey, look, I know what you need. I know what you deserve. And unfortunately, my timing right now isn't ideal. However, I can't stand the thought of you not being here and in my life mm-hmm. and us not being together, asking for some time, asking for your patience. There's a conversation that happens, yeah. right? And, you know, if, if that conversation isn't happening, we move on. So. And even if he doesn't have words, because I know a lot of men struggle That's with true. the verbiage, right? That's true. Men are more, they, they act, I feel like, more than they are able to pull together the yep. words to express themselves. Yeah. Because men are natural hunters. And so if he cannot express himself as eloquently as Nicole just <laughs> just, just displayed it, then it, you should be able to see it in your in his actions. Mm-hmm. Period. Exactly. Agreed. Okay. So standards. It's funny because I had one where I uh, said uh, something about like going out if we were just going to like kind of make it a little lighter. But going out, I'm too old to not be in a section. <laughs> I'm going to go out. <laughs> Got that from your head. Is there any other way? I can't. At this point, no. Oh my gosh, you want me to be standing up like a freaking canned sardine first? No. no. Can't do it. Can't, can't do, do it. that. That's funny. That's what I thought you were going to say that, but I was like, oh no. Oh She's no. She's offering depth. Um, so, another one. This is interesting. I've outgrown the need to be the hero in everybody's story and have accepted the fact that I just might be the motherfucking villain. Oh. And I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, so I think that does have a little bit of a connection to people pleasing. Mm-hmm. Um, but in this stage in life, the focus is on moving in a space that feels the most authentic to me. Yeah. Um, that doesn't compromise my morals, my values, my ethics. Yeah. And um, my happiness. Yeah. Right. Um, and my mental health. Yeah. So if any of those things are out of whack and I have to exit stage left, and that doesn't make you happy or uh, that it, that lets you down or that disappoints you. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay that with that. That is so funny because I actually had this conversation with uh, with my boss at work. I, I, I'm supporting a, a leader 
who is just she's just she's a she's challenge. Just, a challenge. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Because, uh, girl, <laughs> so many you. words. I know, I know. So many words is going to my head. I was like, hold <laughs> up now. We talked about not quitting these challenges. I don't know who listened. <laughs> exactly. I don't know who listened. So I needed to choose my words wisely. Thank you, girl. Here for you. Got it. Okay. <laughs> who is a challenge. Mm-hmm. And so I'm having these conversations with my boss. And she's just like, so whatever this leader, when we had our conversations, our initial conversations, whatever she told me that, like, she didn't like or how she wanted, you know, me as an HR partner to show up for her, she's doing that now to me. Mm. And so my boss, we were just having a conversation about it. And she um, was just like, sometimes, you know, people need a villain in their story. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, so she's doing what she asked me not to do, but she can't look at the fault of her own ways, right. but in turn doing to me what she asked me not, not to, to do, do to her, making me out to be the villain. And so, you know, so my boss did say, like, sometimes a person just needs a villain in, in their story. And that could have absolutely nothing to do with what you are doing or what you aren't doing. Um, that is just human nature. Mm-hmm. And so um, you're, you're absolutely right release yourself from that yeah. you know what I mean like again you cannot control other people's opinions of you and I still have to work with this woman obviously you know I, I she's still you know um, my internal client so mm-hmm. there has to be some sort of respectful professional working relationship yeah. but um, at the end of the day there are ways that I can manage that relationship mm-hmm. to not internalize um, how she acts to me and then all, by also recognizing kind of what's happening right because at first I'm just like what the fuck is wrong with this you know like what is going on here can I ask a question what was she on the riverboat or was she on she, the dock oh she was on the she's on the riverboat oh okay she's, yeah so okay. Uh, she's a black woman so a lot but <laughs> this is the way we go ask questions I, what, listen, no, like, what she she's this like, or this, this. <laughs> You know what? Not to get into like corporate conversations, but I've experienced now working with a a couple of black women where they had that mentality. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I think it's sometimes when we get in higher positions is the pick me. Oh, you're the most exceptional. Oh, you're you're you have a seat at the table. Now you have to be performative. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you don't want your position in the eyes of your peers or your counterparts or your supervisors who are white to be tainted. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you have to act a certain way to maintain your position. I think it's a shitty approach. But um, I've run across a couple of times where black women did not have the mindset that we have of looking out for other black women or at black black people in the workplace and trying to uplift, Mm -hmm. um, uplift us. And so, um, so back to the villain part. Sorry. So yes, sometimes you're a villain in somebody's story and you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. They don't even know it, but you are. Mm -hmm. And there's just nothing that you can do about it. Just release yourself from it. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if you know that you have um, moved in a way, like I said, that's ethically sound, morally sound, that aligns to your values. Yeah. Are you really the villain? Yeah. Um, so I've just, to your point, released myself of that. And I just don't have the time for the back and forth, which segues into my <laughs> last one. I got time for the back and forth. I'm not oh, going back the and back forth. And with forth. You. I'm not. I'm not. And I, I feel like you probably forth. had this one too on your short list. Like, I'm just not going back yes. and forth with you. If we disagree on something, you have a position. I have a position. I am not here to convince you of my position. I am here to let you know my thoughts. I'm here to let you know my perspective. And if your mind changes, it changes. <laughs> okay, but that's so awkward, though. Like, you, were you having a conversation with your friend mm-hmm. and, like, you have opposing opinions? <laughs> like, where is the resolve, child? Like, how do you end that conversation? Sometimes we agree to disagree. Because I struggle. So do you say that? Do you like, okay, you know what, sis? We do that all the time. We say, like, we'll agree to disagree. Do we? We do. Okay. Then those are the words that come out of my drop mouth. like, true, all right, well, no, no, no. I guess I'll see you but tomorrow. we move on to the next subject. <laughs> but, like, I'm just like, okay, we'll okay. agree to disagree on this one. Or, like, if, if you... If you make the concession and you're like, okay, like, I don't understand why we're doing it that way. And I'm like, well, let's just try 
And if it doesn't work, then we can go back. Right. No, I'm not talking about the dis. I'm not talking about like the disagreements in terms of like how we move with like business or make mm-hmm. decisions with business. I'm talking oh, about just- like real disagreements, like mm-hmm. borderline arguments. Or are you talking about? Well, just it could be both. But if okay. we're talking borderline arguments, listen, we might have just have that awkward moment where I'm like, look, I need I need a 20 second timeout. Give me a TV timeout. <laughs> I need, let me go to bed. <laughs> right. Let me sleep Take on this it. Melatonin. <laughs> Circle back tomorrow. See how I feel. (laughs) I mean, I just, I like, I don't have the time for the back and forth. Yeah. I just don't. Um, Part of the reason why I'm not married anymore. Right. Because I just don't have time for the back and forth. Um, I want to live my life where I surround myself with people who I'm equally yoked with, who I can have conversations with, who I don't necessarily always have to agree with me because there's a difference between not willing to do the back and forth because someone doesn't agree with you um, and not willing to do the back and forth because you know what they say when you argue with the fool. And I'm quoting. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? The, you know my saying. Right. Child. I'm pulling your saying. Some person um, all the way don't know who the fool is. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. So it's just like. I I don't have time for that. I'd rather use that energy in a creative way, in a way that's going to make money, in a way that's going to make my children contributing members to society or a way that's going to increase my skill set, my knowledge and and all that. So to to go back and forth with you to me seems like an energy drain. And I'd rather just direct that energy somewhere else that's going to be more fruitful. Okay. Okay. I can double click on that. But you know, I like a little bit of back and forth. <laughs> when I met you, I, I said, said oh. back and forth queen. Oh. Because I got, she likes a good debate. Oh, I do. <laughs> love a good debate. I love a good debate, not. child. Like, I, I do not. That's, care why, I'm, that's for why I'm asking her. Like, this is real time. I'm asking her, like, how do you just in the back and forth, child, especially mm-hmm. when it's some, that's so why I get it when it's somebody that like you don't care about or you don't have a relationship with, but like when it's somebody that like you have a relationship with, yeah. like how do you move on from the back and forth situation? Is there like a statement that is made or is there like, okay, let's just table this and come back? I just, to me, it's always just an awkward mm-hmm. silence mm-hmm. at the end of the back and forth yeah. when, when no one has agreed mm-hmm. and no one has verbally said, Let's agree to disagree. Yeah. <laughs> so still working through that one. For sure. And, you know, to be honest, it could. I know for me, like I'm about to give some of my cheat code away, but like some things that I will say is, you know, maybe I'll say sleep on it or I'll just say, you know, take take some time just to think about it and come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sound familiar? Take some time. Take some time. Just think about it. Just think about it. Let me know. We can revisit it. Right. And and I'll do that even if it's not a heated situation. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I do believe that time solves a lot of things. Yeah. A lot of things. And so if you can take the time, reflect and avoid making decisions that don't need to be made in the moment, um, and take the time to actually think about them. Yeah. You you might come back and come back with a better a better idea or a better yeah. thought or a different thought, something that complements the idea or yeah. whatever that I threw well, it's out. Easy. So. It's easy. It's it's better to step away when you're uh, in the heat of the moment because yeah. you're able to have gain clarity. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and have all those what you call endorphins. All those endorphins, the adrenaline going, adrenaline's all that going, stuff. Child, like yeah. And I know my job hates me because I I take time. People will bring emergencies and listen unless it's a pay issue somebody's safety is jeopardized or whatever i'm not i'm not jumping for it yeah but i take time especially when we're talking about like associate issues and there's like a disagreement um i will take a day like you might send it i'll look at it i'll scan it okay this this isn't an immediate needs to be addressed right now yeah let me think about it let me see how time solves the situation i'll come back to it within half a business day, but my job hates me for that. But nine times out of 10, time now, solves the I issue. I am that way too. Not because time solves the issue, because my time, y'all, like I, I just, <laughs> I'm very, like I don't have time for this. If something I'm comes busy. on my desk, it is not like pressing. Mm-hmm. I don't have time for this I, and it could wait. And so that, I'm a, I, that's my, I have one more. Mm-hmm. So he talks about it on our reinvention episode. 
to roam, to chase and not attract. Like, I am not chasing <sighs> for nothing. And I tell this to like, even, you know, we, we brought up work, but my coworkers all the time, they're busting their asses, breaking mm-hmm. their backs, trying to be the best in the, mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> stick out and do this and do that. I'm like, these people don't care about right. you, child. Like, right. let me tell you something. If you want this promotion, uh, breaking your back to be a people pleaser or show that you're going above and beyond is not going to be what gets you mm-hmm. the role at the end of the day. And, you know, I think we need to have another episode about, like, HR tactics and really, yes. really goes on behind the scene, but uh, the scenes. But you know, I just feel like you know, again, what's for me is going to find me, and I will not have to chase whatever that particular thing is. And again, like I said on the last episode, you know, when I was passed up for a promotion or an opportunity, you know, didn't pan out the way that I wanted it to, or whatever the case may be, like you know, I. I don't know, submitted something for something and, you know, didn't get selected, whatever the case may be. Like, I do not allow that now to determine just how I move forward. Like, I just chuck it up. Oh, well, wasn't for me. Whatever is for me will come to me. And I um, I have implemented that mm-hmm. in my life and, mm-hmm. and want to continue that going forward. It has released a lot of stress from me because I am only in control of the things that I control. Like I can't worry about like if somebody has say so over like my destiny, what they're going to say, how they're going to feel, what decision they're going to make. I can't worry about that. Like I only have control about what I can do to help alter that. And if, you know, it doesn't work out, it just don't work out, child. On to the next thing. Right. On to the next thing. Redirecting, like there's there's a blessing in the redirection. Absolutely. Yeah. And you don't know like what could happen. Like it's just so crazy because you don't know what can happen in mm-hmm. those opportunities or those, those moments. Even something as simple like being redirected for traffic. Oh. You know, like we've had you, many a you, moments like yeah, that. Yeah, you just don't know. Yeah. What blessing is in, mm-hmm. in, is in the redirection, mm-hmm. and so I just strongly feel at this point in my life that like what is for me is going to be for me, and it's proven that way. Yeah, like all this time anyway. Yeah, yeah. So. I um I I don't agree with that, and that kind of taps into my um my. You got another one? No, but oh, but it. It feeds into this current state that I'm in, my state of like practical delusion. We've talked. About, right? She has Nicole has oh such a high level of practical delusion. Yeah, I, had to, I had to go look this up mm-hmm. because it's actually a thing, mm-hmm. and you can't tell Nicole nothing, baby. You like, can. She is the best. It it has the best. It is the best at it all. I got I got <laughs> nine lives, baby. <laughs> This level of Delulu that I operated, but you um, have to. Uh, you have you to. You have to. You absolutely have to. Like there are yeah, things that are just like sitting right here, and I just, I said this. I'm choosing to walk in faith, not fear. But that also is like serendipity, mm-hmm. <laughs> because it, no, it it dictates it really your is. life and the things that happen to mm-hmm. you in your life. You could yeah. either be sad and doubtful mm-hmm. and you know negative about your life or you can have the healthy dose of right. the <laughs> delusion <Lulu>. the lulu <laughs> and manifest all the fucking things that's that you the want thing. that's it, crazy it, i believe that the lulu actually <laughs> feeds into the yes. process of manifestation yes And if you, we've talked about it, if you don't see it, if you don't see yourself in it, if you don't put yourself in it, if you don't believe it, it will not be. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that is, girl. Uh, Yeah. I'm practicing the the healthy, the Lulu child. It's fun. I was just like, when I was watching her operate, (laughs) just just looking at her. (laughs) Before we really got to look at it, listening to her, I said, girl. Yeah. But look, has, go look this up. has any of it's the thing f- true? But let me just ask this: Has any of have any of my Delulus not actually happened? No, you are you are. But if, if it doesn't, like you're just so you're like Ray Charles to the bullshit. Child, to quote Lil Wayne, yes. like you're like what it didn't happen. 
I, it, like you're just mm -hmm, on like just just your own little world you don't see it. exactly angel reese you don't see it like, i don't you see just, it you know and but i do i do see it i do trust me i do have moments of like social regret you have where you have moments of like coming out of your delulu <laughs> like, like, like oh shit <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> I get all Bernie Mac on him. Oh shit! What the you, fuck? You, Eyes you bulging out. Of okay, so you do come out of that the little every moments. now and again, and then I put myself yeah. right back yeah. in it. So yeah, I, like, you have I, to. Put, I gotta put myself right back in it. You know, and and when when the Delulu goes a little too far, you know, I recognize when I need to reel it in, and I need to, you know, I need to issue my apologies or eat my humble pie. Um, but yeah, especially when it comes to where I want to be, um, how I want to show up in this world, where I envision my life going, where I envision the life of my kids going and where I see us going and growing to, even with this podcast. Uh, yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah. I'm motherfucking delusional. Yeah. But you are too, because when you say I... think big, bitch, <laughs> you are too. <laughs> but... That's just a saying, child. Like, you 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 live in that shit every day, mm -hmm. I do. or most of the times. And I I'm do. like, I am trying to live in that Delulu as well. Yeah. So that is it's what I, that's what I am trying. To, that's where I'm trying to be. It's to. a fun place. It okay. is okay. All right. So anything else on your list? No, that we was transition it. to WP. Let's go to what's popping. Okay, let's go to what's popping. Let's go to um, the river the riverboat <laughs> battle royale, Montgomery massacre. Yes. I tell my children that was the Boston Tea Party. Listen, <laughs> a classic. Wait, case. the Boston Sweet Tea Party. Yeah, that's they right. Say on TikTok. Sweet Tea Party. Um, a classic case of uh, pontoon and find out. Fuck around. <laughs> Fuck around and find out, um, girl. So listen, we to your point, we needed this. It's been a it's been a heavy week. You go back to last week. We didn't talk about it and what's popping, but Lizzo's background dancers. Oh my! <laughs> saying that she fat shamed them. What in the and world? She's a freak, child. Apparently, a she gets it al freak. always. She gets it always. That's a tourist. But not telling her world. dancers to go and like touch on Pete girl. girl. That's all kind of like it's a lot. It's a lot. But we needed it. Employee, because employment lawsuits. The girl, HR radar. Can you, ima can you imagine? Fully activated. Yeah. Um, but a heavy week nonetheless, right? With Lizzo, I know a lot of us love Lizzo. Um, she could, for the most part, do no wrong. And the alleged, these people are saying that she's done wrong. Um, so for this thing to happen on Saturday. I know she happy. For, to, to have the spotlight shift. <laughs> she is happy. From her to Montgomery, Alabama. You absolutely got to be doing cartwheels and high kicks. Have to be. If you're Lizzo. What else? Would, girl. So... We all know the story. We know what happened. A mini pontoon docked on a space on this dock that they weren't supposed to dock in. And there was a large riverboat full of us mm -hmm. um, that needed to dock. They had the rights to dock. The mm -hmm. pontoon was illegally parked wrong in the wrong place in the wrong place at the wrong time and they, they found clearly, out how they wrong found out were. how wrong of a time it was real fast and um there's a gentleman i don't know his name but um he was doing his best to try and let them know that it needed to be moved yeah he's physically trying to move the pontoon um he is um african american we have the pontoon owners who uh, apparently own uh, Vassar Corner Store or something like that, which oh, we should gas never station. gas station, which we should never patron anymore. Mm -hmm. Let them go out of business, and um, they started to come down the the, the the plank or the whatever the ramp was um, and confronted this man. Yeah, this man did everything that he could. By my estimation, what the social media Girl, all news the videos, outlets, I got showed. every angle of this fight. He did everything that every he could angle. to. In a in a most in the most pacified way, let them know they needed to move their shit. Yeah, he was just doing his job. He was just doing his job. A guy yeah. who clocked in was doing his job. Yeah, and um, and they got physical with him. They got real physical with. They him. They tried to jump this man and beat his ass. They did. In the I, moment he sent out the Negro <laughs> back call by throwing his hat up in the air. What is that all about? He, who cares what it was about? But wait, everybody you, knew. Nobody saw that hat come down. Where is that hat? Where is 
I got questions I because got questions. out of all the videos that I saw and all the angles, I never saw that hat again. <laughs> Where is that hat? <laughs> Malcolm got it. That Malcolm caught it. I got they you, got my brother. Hey, I'm so happy, child. Malcolm X Dang. got it. First of all, <laughs> this could not be more hilarious. The boat, <laughs> the river boat that was coming in is named Harry. <laughs> After the, the late great and historical Wait. trailblazer Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman, who would have been so elated she, that these people got their ass she whipped. She stood up in her grave. Girl. Gave a round of applause. The, the, the man who created the folding <laughs> chairs is black. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that. This is such a tribute to our ancestors. <laughs> it's too... It's beyond me. I am sweating. <laughs> this is a tribute to our ancestors in so many ways that I'm so emotional about this. I get that. This is hilarious. Oh, my God. First of all. <laughs> so, so. Oh, my God. So, he throws yes. the hat up. <laughs> he throws the hat to up. the heavens. Malcolm catches it. Yeah. <laughs> the boat is hairy. The Avengers. Assembled. Yes. <laughs> and they said, and uh, girl, okay, let me get myself because where is my fan? I okay, so, <laughs> so they, so everybody, so first of all, these people were beating this man ass in front of everybody. So there was security, white people, black people. They just didn't care. Like <laughs> that goes to show you the level of privilege and like, you know, just. Not just being able to do whatever mm -hmm. the fuck you yeah. are thinking you can do yeah. whatever the fuck you want to do. Yep. Starting to jump in on this night. Men and women. Yes. Let's make that very yes. clear because their women were there fighting too mm -hmm. and, and, and swinging licks. So don't they nobody were. feel bad for old girl getting boxed <laughs> in the head with that chair Multiple created times. by that black man. <laughs> Why was like this? Like, oh, uncle swinging that chair. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I did not come here for this. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, so men and women on this boat, it, it, it kept out that this is a family. So right. everybody was fighting. Oh my gosh! And um, so yeah, the black men, the black men and black women activated. They saw what was Whoa. happening. It was just like fuck that. Can we talk about the activation? Not on my though? watch. Can we talk about the activation? Let's talk about the activation. How. <laughs> <laughs> these men came off the boat, the riverboat, once it finally had a chance to dock. Motor's still running on this riverboat. Take off their shirts, start skipping. They oh, said, yeah. They said, you, <coughs> you know it's never going to end well when black men start, start skipping, skipping towards their shirts the off. They <laughs> said that was your opportunity to start that boat. <laughs> to Fred Flintstone and Yo, a run, child. Get out of there. Oh, my but God. But at the end of it, one was jumping in the water yep. to get away from it. Uh-huh. A woman was thrown, thrown in the water, in the water by a woman, by a woman. And yep. So but um, she almost got sucked. We talked about the Titanic, but almost got sucked in. Oh, did by she? The, the, the oh, riverboat motor was right running. there. It was. We it was saw right water there. just coming up. She could have gotten sucked into the yeah, engine. So, um, so yeah, it, it has just been such. It, again, all the emotions. Mm. Like it's hilarious, obviously, but it's yeah. just. Is such a liberating and just exciting and elated moment, I feel like, for black people. Because, and I think white people, you know, they're on the TikToks. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily know why we're all celebrating like in Jubilee. But it's just right. like we have seen so throughout the years, the history. I don't have to mm -hmm. tell y'all the history yeah. of black men just being beat merciless yeah. for for doing nothing. And, and, and the white men that have... Um, you know, uh, done those things to them had just gotten away with it. And so it was just such a great moment to see us come together to assist, you know, another black person in need. Yes. And, you know, to send a clear message. Yeah. Like, that shit is just not going to fly. Like, right. because again, what level of confidence and, uh, um, what do you call it? Privilege mm -hmm. that they have to do that in front of all these people. I know they had probably had liquid courage too, mm -hmm. but still, that's, like that's a, that's I've had a lot said. of liquid courage, and they <laughs> never caused me to like jump on somebody and beat their ass. No. Child. On a on account of so, a boat, and on account no. of yeah, moving yeah. a boat. They were in the wrong. They were clearly in the wrong. So yeah. this has just happened so many times. So it's just so like it's just like okay, mm -hmm. like now you know black people are sticking together and. and 
and um, having each other's backs. And I just think that's such a beautiful thing. And it ties into what's happening in Africa right now. Mm -hmm. Because if you have not heard, Nigeria and South South Africa and um, Con not Congo, but another one or two of the African countries are now kicking France mm -hmm. out of their countries. Mm -hmm. And so what they're trying to do is come together as a one united Africa to, to get back ownership of their resources, resources yeah. because Africa is rich in resources. Africa, you know, like um, Mama Africa said, we, Africa doesn't need the world. Mm -hmm. The world needs Africa. Be gone up. France makes billions of dollars off of um, importing, mining and importing so um, a Leone? mineral. Sierra, Sierra Leone, mm -hmm. yes. Importing a mineral from Africa that really fuels like their lights. Mm -hmm. And what they were saying is Niger, so many people, most of their people don't even have lights. Mm. So you have the infrastructure that is being run through the minerals that you're taking from Africa right. to source your people with lights. But the people mm. in the country that you're taking it from don't even have no lights. Now, I ain't going to say that the African leadership has not been, mm. um, you know, is not to blame for this in the past because they absolutely are. But now it seems like, just like the Montgomery, that Africans are awaking mm -hmm. and they're wanting to take back their power and form alliances mm -hmm. with countries like Russia and North Korea um, that will help <laughs> them kind of become, you know, the, the power that they can be and that they are. Well, let's just be careful, though, because those two countries, if there was ever a wolf in sheep's clothing. <laughs> well, 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 what people are saying is, you know, look at the countries. Not, I mean, mm -hmm. U.S., France, you know, mm -hmm. these are these countries that they have been doing business with. Mm -hmm. Look what they did. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, the devil that you know is mm -hmm. better than the devil that you don't know. But right. when you have only seen right. people that have come to your country that have stolen your people, mm -hmm. put them into slavery, have continued to, you know, hold your people in bondage, you know, um, just pillage mm -hmm. and steal your resources and then turn around and make it seem like you're savage. Mm -hmm. And that piss, that's what pisses me off because growing up, you would see those commercials of like the Africans on TV mm -hmm. with the bugs flying all around their yeah. face. And it's just like, that's what they were, that was propaganda mm -hmm. because life started in Africa and Africa is such a rich, um, a rich continent. It was the beginning of civilization. Um, and there's so much wealth, I think, mm -hmm. there in Africa. <clears throat> so it's just interest, interesting to see what's happening. And that's prideful as well yeah. to watch those new leaders kind of get the people energized mm -hmm. and excited about like what this new Africa can be and then telling the leaders the truth to their faces. Right. You know what I mean? Because a lot of these leaders from all these foreign countries, France, whatever, U.S., like to come and play in their faces. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? This is oppressive. Yeah. What are you talking about? And like, like gaslighting, come on right? Gaslighting. Yeah, yeah gaslighting. <clears throat> so, so excited to see like Africa um, you know, reclaim their power and fight for what's theirs. The same as like I see mm -hmm. this this yep. Montgomery riverboat parallels with black people mm -hmm. standing up and finally trying to to, to fight for what's ours physically mm -hmm. because obviously we fought for what was ours throughout you know history. Right. Um, but this was just this is just an exciting time I feel like for African folks. Yeah, my hope though um, for the continent and and the countries is really that they come together as a, a set of nations, right? And reduce the amount of need that they have on countries outside of the continent. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that's where their power really lies. Well, and, yeah, that's what this new leader is saying, yeah. That, that to me is the goal, right? Yeah. And to not depend on the... Um, you know, the the resources that, say, a Russia or a North Korea can offer. Mm. But I do understand that, listen, well, like, you, you got to start from somewhere. Girl, right? they're starting from scratch. Be because if we're looking at... Yeah. If That's we're looking at people in Russia, we're looking at people in North Korea, you know, the the, the, the standard and quality of life is quite low um, when you look at the masses. Yeah. Um, but you've got to start from somewhere. Well, so I, I don't think disagree. what they're promising is their own autonomy. And mm -hmm. Russia is like 
promising to give them and forgive a whole bunch of money um, mm-hmm. in debt mm-hmm. and so and, and also promising them their autom- right. autonomy and their freedom to make their own decisions, yeah. which is what they want. They want the freedom to make their own decisions yeah. as leaders, as countries, as they should. And then, you know, one of the um, ways in which, you know, the colonizers were able to do this for so long is through the, the psychological warfare. Yeah. Right. Because why sh- wouldn't those countries be able to come together? Yeah. They're all on the same continent. They're all the same people. Right. Why wouldn't they have been they able to come together? They pit them against mm-hmm. each other. Yeah. Exactly. And so finally start to starting to wake up from that and recognizing it, what it was and realizing that they the whole continent, all of the countries would be stronger together. Yeah. Um, I think it's just such a beautiful thing. But again, like, you know, they're trying to form their super PAC, just like, I mean, we have ours yeah. as yeah. well. I know. But I just be careful of Russia yeah. because but they, can't, at, they can't operate alone. They, they can't operate alone, can't. but be careful of these countries, right. That come offering gold and silver and food and all this stuff. Right. Um, because look at Ukraine, right. Um, if they can do that to their neighbors who look like them, what are they going to do to us? Yeah. You know, so I just, uh, th- uh, you're probably not listening out there, but just, uh, <laughs> it, it, does, listening. it does make me a little nervous, but okay. Um, I I had one more, but I feel like the Montgomery motorboat massacre was, um, <laughs> was so significant. Shout out to Aquaman, the man who jumped. Yes. That 16 year old jumped into the water and um, swam. swam to the dock to render aid to the good brother who threw up the back call. Um, <laughs> because one thing about black people is we all don't swim. Yeah. Right. And he jumped in the water. He was looking like girl. M- Mackay Phelps. He was swimming, <laughs> swimming his ass off. Uh, the best freestyle I have seen in a yeah, long time. He did that. Um, and he got over there. And if you looked at the angle of him jumping in, he mm-hmm. looked like he jumped in a little cautious. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't I didn't know where that was going. But that he, adrenaline kicked in. That adrenaline kicked in, girl. Yeah. He jumped in and swam yeah. his ass right. Yeah. And then I was just like, well, did he swam up there to do what? Because I didn't know if he was actually fighting. But then there was another angle where mm-hmm. I saw he was throwing them bows, girl. He like he was fighting. So he swam up there to fight. Yeah. Much respect to him. He's 16 year old, years, he's 16 years old. His name is Aaron. And they say that there is a GoFundMe for mm-hmm. him. They say that his parents say that his cash app has crashed because oh, so many people I are sending money um, and donations. So I will just say, keep that going. Let's send this young man to college. Mm-hmm. Let's do whatever we can do um, to help support him and his family because yeah. they're probably going to need it um, after all of this dies down because they still have to live yeah. in Montgomery mm-hmm. um, after all of the attention from this story goes, goes away. away. So I just want this little boy to be set up for life. Yes, absolutely. That's that's great. And then when we come back next week, I want to talk about the state of affairs um, in the city of Houston politically because um, mm. it's a it's a mess right now. It's a hot mess. It's a mess from the Houston ISD <sighs> takeover by the Texas yeah. Education mm. um, Administration to the state bills that have been passed. And ev- there's a lot of energy being directed at Houston, which is uh, the largest city that has the in the state, but has the ability if it continues to stay blue and grows blue can turn the state of Texas blue. blue yeah. So Abbott is really afraid of us. Fast Wheels Freddy is really afraid of us. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I want to talk about that next week during our What's Poppin'. Because we you need know, to make I'm sure down people know. i political count. I know. I've been watching that too. <laughs> hey. <laughs> this African she Montgomery ready. Massacre got me today, child. Know, these, I'm so proud of our people. Yes, yes. It's not just sense of pride, is, but yeah, we June need to team. talk about Texas, child. <laughs> yes, we need to. We need it's to. It's a hot mess down here. It is. It is. So um, that's the episode. Thank you all for watching and tuning in. Um, you know where to follow us. You know all the handles: Champagne Wives or Champagne underscore Wives between Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Keep running those episodes up. Keep watching. Keep listening. We love y'all. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Bye, y'all. Bye.